who's your target audience? If you're still struggling with how to connect with your right target audience, you definitely don't want to miss today's session. Stick around. Hi, I'm Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we are from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. And we're glad that you're with us today. So today's topic is how to find your target audience. And let's just back up a little bit because in order to find your perfect target audience, you've got to know what your message is. So once you have identified what your message is, the information that you want to share with your public, then you can hone in on the right audience that would want to hear your message. I love that this is kind of like a carryover from the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind Group, where we really oh. get into this one-on-one, -on -one and we're able to devote time to talking to all of you one-on-one -on -one about your target audience. You know, because this is, this is one of those make-or-break moments. A lot of you want to get paid. You want to get paid to speak. And a lot of you are having concerns about how are you going to do that? Who's going to pay you to speak? Who's going to pay you to come out or jump onto a Zoom call and share your message with them? And well, if you're watching today, here's the thing that you really have to understand is, I think it's what, what, exactly what you just said, Christine. You guys have to understand what Christine just told you. She said, the number one step, the number one step that we have, the number one thing we have to do is we have to figure out what is your message. Because if we were gonna, if we were gonna say, "Hey, there's five steps to finding your audience," you can't go to number two until we do number one. And number one is finding what is your message. Why are you speaking? What are you passionate about? Exactly. And until you can identify what your message, until you complete step one, we can't take you to the next step. Yeah, you have to find out what is your message, and and, and once you figure that out. We figure out what it is that you're passionate about talking about. Why are you even going to stand up to speak? What brought you to this call today? There's an urge. The next thing we have to do is we have to figure out who are you as a speaker and what is it you believe and want your audience to believe, to know, think, or be able to do once, they, once your presentation is over. That's extremely important. What is it that you want your audience to believe? And what type of speaker are you? Now, Christine, I I'm sure everyone who you're watching today, you saw the video that we did. How long ago was that, Christine, that we did that video where we talked about the four speaking styles? Was that like two I weeks think the ago? four speaking styles was just last week, actually. Was that last week? Okay, so it was last week or the week before. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back and look at that video. We talk about the four speaking styles. Because when I ask you the question, this is step number two. When I ask you the question, what type of speaker are you? That means, hey, I know you want to be a motivational speaker of some sort. I know you want to influence people. But hey, are, are you an informative speaker? Do you want to be informative? Do you want to be inspirational? Are you the speaker who just wants to entertain? You want to have people have a good time. You want to make sure that they're getting something good, fun, and joyous out of your presentation. Or are you want to be, do you want to be the speaker who's persuasive? Do you have, maybe you have some products or services that you're interested in persuading people to use, to adopt. You want to persuade people to change and alter their life. Christine, out of the four, out of the four speakers, what's your favorite speaking style? I think my favorite speaking style is motivational mm -hmm. because motivational draws in a couple of things for me. Uh, in order to motivate someone, you have to give them enough information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, un to understand your point. And then inspire them in such a way mm -hmm. that they, they understand the information and inspire them in such a way mm -hmm. that they are willing to take some action. I love that. I love that. So you guys heard that. And Christine, I want to clarify for the, for the, for the, for the new listeners, because Christine said motivational. Now, I know and all of you who've been watching for the last 10 sessions, you know that she meant to say inspirational. And I love that. I love that because the inspirational speaker is one of my favorites also. Inspirational. Are you inspirational? Are you persuasive, entertaining? What's the last one? Educational? Was it educational? Informative? What was the last one? Persuasive. All right. <laughs> you guys watch the video. Go back two weeks and see what that last one was. So that's interesting. If you're a persuasive speaker and you know that you, in your line of work, you are selling a product or service, you do need to understand 
who the potential target is for your service. You're not going to try to sell a product to someone who has absolutely no use. You know, it's a standing joke, right? Oh, he could sell ice to ice to Eskimos. Well, yeah, that, that's funny, but it really is not going to get you anywhere. You need to understand who has a need to mm -hmm. hear what you're about to share. Christine, I'd like to say, you know, people never want the things that you think they need but they always want what it is that they want. And so who is it that wants or already agrees with your message? If you're looking to sell something, if you're looking to make somebody's life better by giving them, you know, selling them spectacles, then you're probably going to think to yourself, hey, not who needs glasses, right? When, I'm, when, when, when you go to sell glasses, you're probably not wondering who needs glasses because the people that need glasses, most of them aren't buying. What you're probably going to wonder is who wants glasses? And who wants some pretty spectacles like those ones Miss Christine Harper has on the day? <laughs> who wants a pair of those? Because those are the people. That's your target audience. You see, but it all mm -hmm. started out by knowing who you are as a speaker and knowing that either you're a persuasive speaker. Because if you're a persuasive speaker, you already know that, hey, I'm going to try to persuade them to buy these nice, pretty red glasses that my partner has on here. And if you're an informative speaker, now, if you're an inform informative speaker, you're probably going to speak and convince them that they really should get glasses and the benefits of glasses. And yeah. also why your glasses are worth taking a look at. Mm -hmm. Because understand, there's probably, there are very few products out there that really are a monopoly. Mm -hmm. There's always competition with what it is that you're offering. You know, Christine, I really love, and guys, I really love those first three. And I think these first three points that we're giving to you right here, you know, what, figuring out what your message is and determining who you are as a speaker, what type of those four are you? And what is it that you want your audience to know, to be able to do, believe, or think when you're done? Because what I've discovered is once you determine that, once you determine your message and you figure out who you are as a speaker and you figure out what it is that you want your audience to know, think, do, or believe when you're done, your audience will attract you. They'll, they'll, they'll come to you. What's that old saying, Christine? I think they say kind of like honey bees to honey or something like that. You know, well, something like that. I mean, if you want to take it a little, make it a little more modern, most of you have heard of the law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so like attracts like. Yeah. If you focus on something, if you keep, if you keep focused on a particular idea or concept, you will attract those to you that mm -hmm. also believe in that idea or concept. Yeah. It's amazing. Like attracts like. When, you, when your message is, is properly honed, you know, and you've worked mm -hmm. with somebody, you've worked with a coach, or you work with someone, and your message is honed, people come to you. Your audience comes to you. You don't have to worry about, hey, am I saying it right? You simply have to say it. Guys, anytime I think about that, I think about someone that everyone, all of you probably have heard of. It's Dr. Martin Luther King. And I love using Martin Luther King here because he is probably one of the most famous orators in history probably in world history, not just American history, but world history. And if you've been, al if you've been alive longer than day, you've probably heard that, that speech. And I think, it, let me see if I can recall it. You guys know I'm not good with my memory. So I, let me put my hand here and see if I can recall this. But he gave a speech and he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they, where they will be judged, not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. He said that and the entire world gravitated to him. His audience gravitated to him. You know why? Do you know why they gravitated to him? They gravitated to him because he had the courage to stand up and say something that his audience, and he wasn't looking for his audience, he was simply looking to share the message. He had the courage to stand up and share something that they already believed. Mm -hmm. You see, that's one of the things that I love about this finding your audience. Your audience, are, they're, they're, it's full of people who already somewhat believe the things that you believe. They already share some things in common with you. They already, either they either think, they believe, or they want to aspire to be or be able to say or do something that you're sharing or saying. And see, some of you thought that it was just how many flyers you printed and posted up around your neighborhood. No, no, no. It's the ideas and concepts that mm -hmm. you are expressing. When you're expressing them clearly, mm -hmm. someone else 
is feeling the same thing and will gravitate to it. Yeah, like attracts like. You know what else they say? They say that, you know, there's, there's, here's another big one. They say that they say that opposites attract. And so that means if like attracts mm. like, that means that, you know, mm. honey bees are flocking to the honey. That means if opposites also attract, your message will also attract your haters. Well, I mean, most people want to run away from their haters, right? You want to figure out how to get that guy out of the room that's heckling me. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you have to listen to what your haters are saying so that you can clearly understand how to respond in a way that's insightful and yeah. may help you shift the way you're delivering what you have to say. Hey, you know what? I got to tell you this because we spoke, we spoke about Martin Luther King. Now, anybody who's, who's very familiar with that area, you remember there was a guy around that same time, a guy by the name of Malcolm X. Now, I don't know if all of you have actually heard of this guy, but he was very controversial. And people say, well, hey, why was Mal what made him so attractive to people all over the world? And I said, what, here, here's the thing that he learned. He learned and he had the courage to stand up and speak and share his message in the face or in the, in the sight of his haters. And his haters mm -hmm. made him popular. Because here's what happens. And I always tell people this. I always say this. Listen, haters are good. Have you ever heard that saying? Say, what, what's that saying, Christine? I think it's... Uh, Bad publicity is better than no publicity. Is it something like oh, that? Yeah. Have you heard all that one? Yeah, all publicity is all publicity is good publicity. And yeah. so what, what Malcolm did is he allowed his haters to share him across the nation, around the world, because they looked at him and they said, oh, my goodness, you hear what this guy is saying. And what I love about this is once you learn how to master your haters, your haters, they will put you before other people, and that's going yeah. to give other people an opportunity to listen to your message. And if they agree with your message, and if they believe somewhat similar to what you believe or whatever it is, whatever it's you're saying, then they're going to gravitate to you. And it's almost, it's almost magical because once again, your haters have helped your, 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 your honeybees to find the honey. They bought your mm -hmm. honeybees to you, and now your honeybees are making you the, the king of the hive, right? The king or the mm. queen of the hive. So you have to learn to, you know, love your haters. Love your haters. Like them. I tell people all the time, you're not really, you're not really growing until you get some haters. If you don't have any haters, you're not growing because they're great obstacles for growth, right? So like yeah. your haters, love them, pounce on them occasionally. You got to know to pounce on you occasionally, not too much. <laughs> There's some people in the world today when they, they know who their haters are and they will go full blown on their haters. Don't waste your time going full blown on your haters. Address them a little bit. And, and here's what I want you to learn. Haters are good, but allow the cheers from your audience, the compliments from your audience to drown out the negativity of your haters. Mm -hmm. And eventually, mm -hmm. this, this crazy thing happens. Eventually, your audience will take care of your haters. Absolutely. Well, Christine, while we're here, while we're here, what do you think is probably one of the best things you could tell them? You know, we've talked for a little bit. What do you think is one of the best things that you would tell them in helping them to find their target audience today, their best audience, their paying audience? Well, the best thing is to engage a private presentations coach. Mm -hmm. Or you could work with a small aspiring speakers mastermind group. Mm -hmm. The reason the small group works so well is that they are like-minded individuals who are all trying to pursue a similar goal. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting how this works out. They're never all like five people in the same industry trying to do the same exact thing. They're complementary industries, they're complementary goals. So yeah. they're able to help one another. And your coach, who is a part of the group, knows how to draw out the right elements so that people are asking the right questions and coming up with some good answers. One of the things that I love when we get to share this with the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind group is one of the things I love to say is that there's over 7 billion people on the face of the earth. <laughs> Seven billion people on the face of the earth. How would you love, you could to come together, we get to come together on a small Aspiring Speakers Mastermind group, usually 10 people or less in the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind group. Work on your presentation because here's what I have learned. You see, we just gave you five steps to finding your target audience. We said, hey, you got to figure out what your message is. And the number two step was extremely big because number two, we said, hey, you have to figure out who you are as a speaker. Number three, once you figure out who you are as a speaker, you have to figure out what it is that you believe. 
and what it is that you want your audience to be able to do or what do you want them to think or how you want them to act or behave once it's done and the key word there is you because you can work in a small aspiring speaking group with several different speakers but they're not you they're not you and they're not going to be able to share your message with the world in the way that you would say they don't have your voice they don't have your your good looks right they don't have your smile they don't have your personality and they don't have your background experience but what they can do in a mastermind group is they can listen to your presentation along with myself and Christine and help you to get better, to help you hone that message, to help you craft that message in a way that brings into action that thing that Christine just talked about. Like attracts like, the law of attraction, those honeybees to honey. And that's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful stuff. Did you press like? I hope you press like because... We don't get dressed up here to do this for nothing. We want to get feedback to know how you feel about what you're seeing. Press like, folks. Press like. I think that's it for this week, Christine. I think that's it for today's okay. session. What are we going to talk about next week, though? Mm, next week? I thought next week we are going to start an aspiring speakers mastermind group. So I think oh, so they better press like. I guess they better, and better press like and, and, and yeah. click that button and join the mastermind group then. <laughs> hey, listen. I'll see you guys on the, I'll see you guys in the Aspiring Speakers Mastermind group. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be an awesome experience. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. All right, Christine. Hey, until Peace next time, folks.